the life of Mary Magdalene, the life and times of the Holy, and equal Apostle Mary Magdalene. Prologue. I love those who love me, and those who seek me will find grace and glory. For all the saints loved Yahuwah, and gained grace and glory from him. Grace, because their bodies lie buried in tombs, and sweet perfumes gush forth, and wonders are accomplished for those who come to them rightly with faith. Glory, which is that heavenly one of Elohim in the kingdom of the heavens. What glory, what brilliance, what frankness the saints will gain when they hear Christ say. Well done, good, and trustworthy and noble servants. You have been trustworthy in a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into my kingdom. See what profit those seeking the Yahuwah and doing his will, and guarding his commands possess. They are blessed, they see Elohim. They will find his grace and glory. And there was one among the holy ones, the honored Mary Magdalene. For she sought Yahuwah and loved him, and gained his grace and glory. She became holy, and equal to the apostles, and proclaimed his holy name in many places. She became an anointer, and established as a miracle worker. She kissed the Lord's feet. We find in the holy scriptures many things concerning her. Even the four evangelists glorified her, and praised her for the love and faith that she had for Christ. The Healing and Calling of Mary Accordingly, this blessed Mary was from Magdea, near the boundaries of Syria, exceedingly wealthy, youthful in appearance, and beautiful. Her father was named Cyrus, and her mother Eucharistia, known and honored by all for both their nobility and wealth. This certain Mary Magdalene, having heard about our Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, that he was living and teaching in Jerusalem, and performing many miracles, giving sight to the blind, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, and curing those having demons, she abandoned Magdala, and set out for Jerusalem, seeking Adonai. Having found him, she followed him with her soul and body, and became his disciple, and gained great grace from Adonai himself. Mary Magdalene was troubled by seven demons. By the grace of Christ, she was released, and rid of them, and was healed. In hearing Mary Magdalene had, seven demons, it means, many is equal to a multitude, for scripture knows to substitute the number seven for a multitude, just as David had recalled, that the barren woman bore seven children. The seven demons you hear, are the opposites of the seven virtues, such as the spirit of irreverence, the spirit of stupidity, the spirit of ignorance, the spirit of lying, the spirit of vanity, the spirit of conceit, and the spirit of beauty. The entirety of all these are wrestling against, and opposite all the noble virtues, because ever sin has a demon, that activates its own spirit. From these spirits that Mary Magdalene had, are Adonai and Elohim, released and healed her from all of them. She was rid of every evil, and she put on every good. She followed Christ, and became his disciple. And she was serving him until his passion. Witness to the Resurrection From that time, she hated all wealth, glory, beauty, and every other perishable thing of the world, and counted them as nothing. She followed Christ, and was his disciple and served him until his passion. And she became an anointer for the other women. Christ loved her, and the Virgin Mary even made her her own companion, and fellow traveler to the tomb. But also she was the first of the other anointed, with the Virgin Mary, to see the resurrection of Adonai. And she kissed the feet of Adonai, and embraced him. Indeed, at the time of the resurrection, she saw in the middle of the night an angel like lightning even roll away the stone of the tomb. And she proclaimed to the disciples the resurrection of our Adonai, speaking to the apostles and to Peter. Many times on that day she went to the tomb with the other women, showing the empty tomb. And she went even with Peter and John to the tomb. Again, that day she saw two angels in the tomb, one at the head and the other at the foot. Then the holy angels talked to her, saying, Whom do you seek? Indeed, she saw our Adonai, but she thought he was the gardener. And Adonai reproached her since she knew him. He said to her, Do not hold on to me. And she was with the remaining women in Jerusalem until the ascension of our Adonai, Yehushua HaMashiach. Mary accuses Pilate before the emperor. And the apostles went to preach. But that blessed Mary Magdalene loved our Adonai, 
Yahushua HaMashiach, so much that she went to Rome to the emperor, bearing this report to him. Pilate whom you dispatched as governor, having been dispatched to Jerusalem, made an unjust judgment against Yahushua, the son of Mary, who had done great signs and wonders among the people, giving sight to the blind, raising the dead, and cleansing the lepers, and casting out demons by his word, and doing everything openly. The chief priests, Annas and Caiaphas, because of jealousy and ill will, delivered him to Pilate, the governor. Having examined him a great deal, he did not find anything worthy of death, but still he crucified him. And creation, seeing the injustice, quaked. The sun darkened its rays, and the moon and darkness altered its course. And the earth shook, and rocks broke. And the veil of the temple was torn from the top to bottom. And the dead arose. So the emperor hearing these things, and because darkness had occurred at that hour, and he had noted the time when this darkness occurred over the whole world, he perceived that the woman was speaking the truth. The emperor wrote to Jerusalem that Pilate should come to Rome, and in a like manner, the chief priests of that year, Annas and Caiaphas. They say that Caiaphas had died in Crete, but Annas came to Rome. And a judgment was made against him, that a sheep buffalo be skinned, and he be wrapped in its wet skin and made to stand in the sun. Having been tightly bound, thus, the sun painfully killed his piteous soul. And he appointed Pilate to stand before the emperor for his interrogation about what he did. Pilate and Yahushua's Clothing The emperor had the habit, since he was so exalted and honored, that no one worthy of death saw his face. But if they saw him, he sympathized with their death. When Pilate was about to see his face, he was asked by him. How did you perform the unjust death of this one who was doing marvels and these signs? He first made the judgment that If Pilate should see my face, he shall not have any freedom. And so, when the emperor sat at his judgment seat, Pilate came before him. The emperor, seeing him, stood up straight. And Mary Magdalene was there and saw. She said to the emperor, No, Lord Emperor, that he possesses some clothing from that just one. Because of this, such a penalty should occur. For, he had brought the clothing of Yahushua, singly woven, not having seams, which the Virgin Mary wove with her own hands. And at the time of the crucifixion, the soldiers divided Yahushua's clothes, and each took one part. As for that cloth, they said, Let us not tear it but each cast a lot for his share. And so, Pilate gained this cloth, and wore it under his clothes as an aid. Because of this, Mary Magdalene said, Lord Emperor, he wears the cloth of that just man. He who unjustly crucified him. And having stripped his clothes, they found the cloth, and cast it off. Having put back on his clothes, the Emperor was no longer roused on his behalf. Pilate's Interrogation So he began to question him. How did you dare to execute this unjust murder? Had you not heard the miracles, honored and admired, which he performed throughout Jerusalem, and to every boundary? He gave sight to the blind, he cleansed lepers, he raised a man dead four days named Lazarus, and indeed he performed many miracles. What cause did you find against him, so that you did this injustice and transgression? Pilate answered. Emperor, noble and admired Lord, the chief priests and the scribes of the Jews handed him over to me, saying and shouting that he did not keep the Sabbath and transgressed the law of Moses, and even prevented the offering and tributes to the emperor, and stirred up the crowd. And I, having heard this many times, said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him according to your law. But they began saying with loud voices, Crucify him. He is worthy of death because he has claimed to be the son of Elohim. The whole people said many other words against your power, that if I did not crucify him, I was no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. Having heard these things concerning your power and authority, many times I tried to release him. Then, seeing that I was not loved, but there was uproar among the people, I decided to do this for fear of you. The emperor having heard these things, said to Pilate, O wretched and miserable one, when you had the chance to release him, why did you not do it? Pilate's imprisonment and death The emperor having become enraged, determined to throw him into jail, until he should consider what kind of cruel death 
to give him for the injustice that he did to Yahushua, the just and blameless one. Now, the prisons of Rome were outside of the city. While Pilate was lingering in jail, those who knew and loved him did not dare to address the emperor concerning him, but one day finding an opportunity, they prepared a hunt for the emperor outside of Rome near the jail. They exhorted Pilate, whenever he saw the emperor near there, that he should lean out the doors, in order to beseech him, to make a decision about him. And so, they began to hunt. For they had gathered animals, hares, partridges, and deer in that countryside, but one of the deer, was more beautiful than the others. So the emperor began to pursue the deer, up to the jail. The emperor was grieved, and struggled to shoot the deer. And Pilate, leaning out the window, so that he might beseech the emperor, said. Hurl the arrow at the deer. The arrow flew from the emperor's hand, and struck Pilate in the heart. And he received a miserable death from the emperor's hand. Now let us return to that set before us. Again, Mary Magdalene came to Jerusalem with a big heart because she had avenged our Adonai, Yehushua, Hamashiach. And Tyre Mary Magdalene was a disciple of the holy apostle Peter. After fourteen years since the ascension of Yehushua, the apostles went out to preach of him to the whole world, so that they preached the name of Yahua, the work of his incarnation, and his holy resurrection. The Miraculous Trip to Marseille while one of the apostles named Maximus was staying in Jerusalem, the apostle Peter told Mary Magdalene of this Maximus. Since all the other apostles had scattered, the lawless Hebrews, consumed with jealousy, threw holy Maximus, that apostle, and Mary Magdalene and many other Christians onto a boat without sails, without oars, without bread and water, in order that they would suffer, and that they would unjustly perish. But the will of Yahuwah, and the guide, our Adonai Yehushua, Hamashiach, the true Elohim, saved his servants. And they were carried to France, to a place called Marseille. Having arrived there, hungry, and thirsty, and having been confined, they found no one there to host them, because the people were all idolaters. Mary Magdalene saw the people of that place on the first day, all running to the idol whom they were worshipping, in order to make a sacrifice. The Blessed Mary Magdalene stood with great frankness before them, with her face cheerful, and her speech sweet. She began to preach to them the word of Yahuwah. And she spoke to them, so that they would look and see the Maker of heaven and earth, Elohim, the Almighty and Powerful, the true Elohim, and that they would refuse the idols, and have faith in Christ. Everyone who heard her speech was amazed at her beauty, and the sweetness of her speech. Mary Magdalene appears in visions. After these words and her teaching, it happened that the ruler of that place came with his wife, in order to make a sacrifice to his God among the idols, so that they might have a child, for they were childless. But Mary Magdalene, seeing them, began to preach the name of Christ boldly. After that day, and the night, Mary Magdalene appeared to the wife of that ruler, in a terrifying vision, and said, because of what pretext is it that you did not do good to these foreigners, seeing that they were hungry, and thirsty, and dying of frost, seeing that they were servants of Elohim? And Mary commanded her to speak with fear these words to her husband, so that he would give charity to these foreigners. But the wife was afraid to tell of the vision that she had seen. When night came again, Mary appeared saving again the same words, saying to speak with her husband. Again, she disobeyed, and said nothing at all. What did the servant of Yahuwah, Mary, do? She appeared a third time, to the ruler and his wife, with great anger and her face alight, as a burning hearth illuminates a house. And she said to him, Sleep, tyrant, body of your father Satan, with the viper your wife, whom I commanded to say these words to you, and she said nothing to you. Rest, enemy of the cross of Christ, who eats and drinks many things and fills your belly well, while you permit the holy foreigners of Elohim to die from hunger, and thirst, and cold. You sleep in your palace with many fine clothes, while those ones die from cold without a home. You have delayed so long to do good for them, that the anger of Yahuwah shall fall upon you. And having said this, Mary withdrew from them. The ruler and his wife leave for Rome. 
Then the noblewoman awoke with a great sigh and great fear. And again, she did not say anything to the ruler. Then the ruler said. Wife, do you know the very dream which I know? She said. Yes, and I am amazed and very terrified. He said. What should we do about this matter? The noblewoman said to him. It would be good to do that, which the servant of Yahuwah said, before the anger of Elohim comes upon us. When it had become morning, they took the foreigners, and entertained them hospitably, and refreshed them with what they needed. After this, on one of the days, Mary Magdalene had begun to teach, and that ruler said to her, Are you able to retain the faith that you teach, and make it manifest? Mary said to him, I carry on well with the aid of Yahuwah, and with miracles, and with teaching, and the aid of my teacher, Peter, who is at the head of the Church of Rome. The ruler, responding with his wife, said to her, Are you able to request from your Elohim that we have a child? Indeed, if you should do this, then we will submit, and we will believe in that which you speak and teach. She determined. I will do this for him. Then she made a prayer to Yahuwah, and it was done. The woman conceived from the prayer of the Holy One. And the ruler seeing this, that truly it had happened, wished to go to Rome to the Apostle Peter, so that he might learn, if it was true, what Mary said, and what she taught. So his wife said to him, I also wish to go with you, as far as Rome, to Peter. He said to her, I do not want this. You are pregnant, and I fear you will suffer something at sea. And she began to cry, bitterly and painfully, throwing herself down at his feet, in order to go with him. Mary Magdalene persuaded the ruler to do her will. And she blessed them, saying, The power of Elohim is with you. And she signed them, with the cross with her fingers, so that a demon would not tempt them on the journey. Then, they waited a boat, and bought everything that they wanted. And they set off. Their remaining things they gave into the hands of Mary Magdalene, and they went away. The Death of the Mother, Meeting of Saint Peter Before they had arrived in Rome, the hour of birth came for her, and she bore a son. Having labored, the mother died, and the sailors were going to throw her into the sea. The ruler was in great distress, and grief for his wife and child, and about what things he should do of them. The ruler begged the sailors not to throw her into the sea, but to bring her to a mountain in order to bury her. Then they saw a mountain top in the sea, and they went there. Having disembarked, they found a small cave, for the whole mountain was wild and full of rocks and they could not dig. They placed her upon the rocks, and the baby with her. Crying bitterly, he covered her with his cloak, since his other belongings were with the Holy Magdalene. Having stepped onto the boat, he went to Rome, to the Holy Peter. And he described to him everything that Mary Magdalene had done for him, and about his wife, and child, and how they had died, and he had placed them in the cave. When the Apostle Peter heard these things, he instructed him concerning endurance, and encouraged him. Do not be grieved, but do whatever Mary Magdalene orders you. No one has been taken, for she did, but she lives because faith in Yahuwah is able to do all things. When the apostle had taught him many things, the ruler wished to go to Jerusalem, to revere the tomb of our Adonai Yehushua, Hamashiach. The apostle Peter even went with him. He made known to the ruler all the places that Yehushua walked, and how he was crucified, and died, and was buried, and resurrected, and ascended to heaven. The ruler passed two years thus. After this, he wished to return to his place. The apostle commanded the ruler to be baptized by Mary Magdalene. When the ruler had stepped out onto the boat, he pondered how he had come from his land with every joy, with his wife and child, and how he returned to it without his wife and child. So, since Yahuwah wanted to honor his servant, Mary Magdalene, the ruler pondered the death of his wife and child, saying, if there remains that which I left behind, and if I should find, I will somehow show them to Mary Magdalene. In accordance with the work of Elohim, he saw the mountain in the middle of the sea. And he determined to go to it. If their bones I should find, I will take them. There, they saw a small child shouting and playing in the sea, and they were amazed. When the child saw them, a he fled. 
He went into the cave and threw himself near the body of his mother, who was covered and lying down, just like the hour when she was buried. Lifting the cloth, he saw his wife alive, and well, his eyes were closed, as if she was sleeping. When he saw her, he cried bitterly with great fear, and everyone who was with him at her funeral, it having been two years now. She was alive and well, and the child was alive and well. So while all were crying, the woman awoke and picked up her child. And the ruler fell to the ground with fear and trembling. He began to ask her. How have you been living so long a time? Answering, the woman said. The servant of Yahuwah, Mary Magdalene, from the hour of my labor until now, was at my side, bearing my life. Indeed, wherever you journeyed, even to Rome and Jerusalem, we were with you, with Mary Magdalene and the child. And just as Peter accompanied you and explained so many things to you, here and there we went. We came to know everything and heard everything and saw with Mary. Mary Magdalene's Death and Translation When the ruler heard these things, he was amazed. Having been struck dumb, he seemed to see a vision. Having placed them on board, he stepped onto the boat, and he returned to his home. He found the poor foreigners alive, and well with every joy. Mary Magdalene began to proclaim to them, just as it happened. And in all these things, we went with you, even in Rome, and in Jerusalem. Then Mary Magdalene baptized them, the ruler, and his household, and every one of the city, small and big. Having established a church, and arranged it, and having taught them many things, she journeyed to other places, preaching the name of Christ. After this, she came to Ephesus, and there she found Holy John the Theologian. And there, holy and fair, she fell asleep. Later, the great King Leo VI, having conveyed her remains, transferred them to Constantinople into the monastery of Holy Lazarus. The glory of our, Adonai, Yahushua, Hamashiach, forever and ever. Amen.